Hello and welcome to Intro to Painting. This series features simple paintings that anyone can do. So grab your canvas and paints and paint alongside me. Today we're going to be painting a pokeball nestled in the grass. But first, let's talk materials. For my canvas, I have a pre-gessoed 18x24 one. You'll need something to mix your paints, and I have a glass painting palette. You'll need something to wash your brushes off in, and I have an old container I've just recycled with some water in it. For your brushes, you'll want a large flat, a large round, some medium rounds, and a small detail brush. I also always use a piece of chalk and real tiny. It's just a piece of Conte crayon. You could use a pencil in this case because we will be tracing our shapes in today. There's also two optional supplies I'm going to be using. I have a palette knife and it's highly recommended so you can kind of keep your paintbrushes clean. I really love using one. I'm also going to be using acrylic glazing liquid today. This is completely optional. You could get by on using water. It just makes things a bit easier. For my paints, I really like a heavy body acrylic and Golden is one of the better brands out there. So you'll need a primary yellow primary magenta, a primary cyan, and then you'll need a black, whether it's Mars or carbon black, either works fine, and you will also need a titanium white. So let's get started painting. For my sky, I'm just going to need some of that cyan and some of that white, so put a great blob of cyan down, and another big blob of titanium white. Next I mentioned that acrylic glazing liquid, and like I said, this is completely optional. You can use a little bit of water, but it is helpful. So I'm just going to put a little bit in my blue paint and a little bit in my white paint, and that's all I need. If I was using water, I would just get my paintbrush a little bit wet and just work with it with a little bit of water on it. So I'm going to go straight onto that glazing liquid and some of that blue, and just load up my paintbrush with some of that blue. Go over to my canvas and just start painting in blue across the top. And grab some more. And because I like to wrap my canvases, I'm going to make sure I paint the whole top of it and the sides as I'm working. Now what this glazing liquid does is it kind of makes it a bit easier to blend and keeps it wet a little bit longer as I'm painting. So now that I've gotten this little bit of a top row done, I'm just going to grab some more paint and just work my way down the canvas. And I'm not going to go too far, I might go about a third. Now that I've gotten about this far, I'm going to grab some white and put it on my paintbrush. And I'm just going to tap into that white right where that glazing liquid is and just put a little bit of white and that glazing liquid back on my brush. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that on my canvas and kind of work it into the very bottom of this dark blue I have just to lighten it up a little bit. Maybe grab a little bit more if I need to. I'm going to try to work it up and blend them together. If I need to, I can grab a little bit more blue. Just a little bit more white. And in order to blend it right, I'm just going to grab more blue and go above it and then down into it. So I have a smoother transition between the two. It's taken a bit more dark blue to make a smoother transition, so I'm just going to keep working my way down, adding in some white below, like so, and then bringing the darker blue down on top. I'm just continuing to work my way down with more blue and white. Now that I've gotten to the bottom, it's pretty much just pure white. And because this painting is going to have grass down here at the bottom, I'm not super concerned if I manage to even get this far with any blue because it's just going to be covered up by the grass anyway later. But the reason I paint it all the way down is so I have a nice smooth transition with the whole sky just in case anything happens to show through. This sky ended up a little bit streakier than the Animal Crossing intro to painting video I had done. I had done it slightly different, 
but I wanted this look for this painting, so don't let it bother you that it's streaky yet. It'll work really good with that grass later. The sky is dry, it's time to start mixing up green for grass, so you'll need yellow and you'll need blue. So because my yellow's in a tub, I'm going to have to use my palette knife to get some of it out. So I'm just going to get a big chunk of it and lay that right on my palette. I'm going to grab a slightly smaller chunk of it and lay that smaller one on the palette. And then even less over here. For the blue, I'm going to put a little bit of blue where the most yellow is, kind of half and half for the middle, and then a lot more blue on this side. What I'm aiming for is I'm trying to get a yellow green, a medium green, and then a blue green over here. Now that I have those spooned out, I'm just going to go ahead and start mixing. So over here, I'm going to just start to stir these two together to make sure they're super incorporated where I don't have the streaks of blue or yellow showing through. So I can keep stirring, I can scoop some of the paint from underneath, then I can move straight to this one. And this is going to be my medium green. And then over here, we're looking for a yellow green. And I had scooped that blue away just to make sure. If it's too yellow, I can add some more of it back in. But I think that was a good choice because this is more of the color I want. And then with this, maybe I'll just put it back in this one just to make it a little bit more blue. And there's all three of our greens. I'm going to start with that blue green and I'm using my big round brush. And I'm just going to start by drawing in some grass. So I want it to be pretty tall. And I'm using this big brush first. I'll move to the little brushes later, but this is going to give me sort of a good base layer. And I'm starting a bit taller on the left, and it's going to kind of work its way and get shorter towards the right. Then I'm going to move on to my medium green and do kind of the same thing. Just pull long streaks of it up. And I'm always starting at the bottom because when I set my brush down, it makes kind of a big dot. And when I pull up, I can kind of flick it and it'll get smaller and thinner towards the top of the painting. Then I'm just going to move into my lightest green and do the same thing. It's important when doing this to start building layers. So that's what I'm doing. I'm starting to fill in with all the different greens. And because they're still wet, they're kind of blending together and making even new greens. Now that I've used that big round to fill in some of the spaces, I'm going to switch back to a smaller round. So I'm going back to that dark green, and now is the time where I'm going to try and fill in the top of this real nice and give myself some nice long grass strokes. So I'm using that dark green, and I'm just going to pull up long bits of grass and try and fill in a bit more where the big brush was not getting, kind of in this area. Because I do want this to be solid grass, except for up top here. So I'm just trying to use a very, very fine point on my brush. I'm trying to let some of them cross, but in general just be very, very pointy and fine tipped up at the top. Now that I've finished the dark green, I grab the medium green, and I'm just going to go ahead and start filling in some blades of grass. Now it's okay if they blend a little bit, but my goal is not to make them blend in completely so I have all the same green. I want to have them kind of stand out, kind of be on their own. So I'm just going to keep filling these in, letting them be their own blades of grass. This is going to take a lot of layers, so I've moved back to the lightest green. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in a few of these guys. 
bringing them all the way down into the rest of this. So going back to the dark green, I just want to make sure I fill in some of these spaces because I do want blue to show through across the top, but down here definitely not. So I'm just going to grab more of that and maybe draw in a few more grass blades towards the top just to fill it in and make it look a bit more natural. Now I was having trouble filling in this area, I was seeing far too much sky through it in the areas I didn't want to see it, so what I did is I took that dark green and then I just painted it solid about this far up, and then as that was drying I took that medium green and then the lighter green and then I just drew in more grass streaks with that. So I'm pretty happy with this, it needs to dry really 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 well before I move on to the Pokeball. Next it's time to start working on that Pokeball, and what we're going to do first is we're going to draw it in by tracing a circle, so I have a few things I could use. I have this plate, I have an old Tupperware container for some queso cheese, and then I have this cork thing I used to put under some of my plants. And I just thought I would try all of them to see which one I like best for how big the Pokeball should be. So if I look at this container thing, I think that's far too small for how big my canvas is. So the next size up is going to be my plate. And I think that's a bit better, but let's try the cork. And I think that cork is a good size for how big my canvas is, so I'm just going to grab my Conte crayon and we're going to trace it. So I have my Conte crayon, it's just like chalk, and I'm going to figure out exactly where I want this to be. Maybe about here. So I'm just going to set it down and use the chalk to trace it, and making sure I don't move it. So I have a nice perfect circle. So that's where my Pokeball is going to be. Before I start painting in the reds and the white and the black, I need to go ahead and prime this white because all of this different grass with all the different streaks of green in it is going to show through my colors and my Pokeball will be kind of green when I'm done. So I just have some titanium white. Then I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in solid white. It's also going to even out the texture I have here from the paint and kind of give it a bit more of a uniform texture and then of course color. I'm most concerned from about 10 o'clock, I guess, to about 5 o'clock of the Pokeball being round. This other bottom half, I'm not super concerned about because after I do the details, I'm going to bring more grass so it's kind of like in it instead of sitting on the grass. But let's let that dry really, really well before we start doing those details. Now that this is dry, I'm going to go ahead and take that chalk off. So I just have a wet paper towel and I'm just going to go all the way around the edges and get rid of all that extra chalk. The next thing I need to do is draw the details of the Pokeball. I'm going to be using blue chalk for this because I find it erases really well compared to some of my other colors. So to start off, I'm going to go ahead and draw in kind of the midline, the equator of the Pokeball. And it does curve just a little bit here. It's not a complete stripe, but there is a little bit of a curve to it. So I'm going to draw the top part, and then the bottom part is going to go just parallel to it. Now I need to draw on the button. So over here, instead of doing just a plain old circle, I'm going to make it a little bit elliptical.
And if I don't like where it is, I can just grab a wet paper towel and erase it out. Once I'm happy with where the chalk is, I can take a pencil and just cement those lines in just so they don't get erased accidentally later. I have it blocked in so it's time to start painting. I have some pure magenta on my palette and I'm just going to go ahead and start filling that in. Now, as you're painting this, you want to make sure you get straight to those edges so you don't see any white on the edges of it. So I'm just being very, very careful and making sure I don't go too far over that line so my circle stays nice and round. In order to get into those small corners, I might switch to a tiny little brush. So I finished the red and I'm going to go ahead and start to fill in some of the black here. And I'm doing that before I do the value because I want that red to dry a little bit first and that way I can kind of judge where all the highlights and shadows are going to go for everything. So I'm going to fill that in. But I've realized I made a mistake. Over here and over here on the Pokeball it should indent a little bit and it just totally slipped my mind I was thinking circle. So. When I get back to doing the grass, I'm just going to go ahead and fill those areas in with more grass to make it blend in and you can't tell. So you can always fix your mistakes, so don't worry about any of them too much. Now my mistake is really throwing me off, so I just mixed up that blue green again. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in just so it it's not thrown me off anymore. It'll still need some touching up later because just filling it in blue-green is not going to solve my problems, but it'll help me later. Well, it'll help me now to figure out what I'm trying to do, but I'll touch it up later when I get back to doing some more grass. Anyway, back to the rest of the Pokeball. So what I've done is I took a little bit of the black I had, um, actually while well, I had the black on my brush, and I mixed it into some of the white to make kind of a lighter gray. And I'm just going to kind of throw that along the base here. And I am going to be working in kind of like a half circle. Trying to just give this a little bit of value. And it's not super important like exactly how this is done because it's going to get covered up mostly by the grass. But the parts that aren't, I want to make sure there is value to the Pokeball. And then if I want, like if I find out it's way too light, maybe the bottom needs to be a little bit darker, I'll just pick up a little bit of black on my brush, and maybe just a tiny bit of water, and I'll just try and darken up the very, very bottom. Just that core of the shadow right here. And I'm just trying to blend it into the gray so it's not so obvious. And then just to touch up the rest of the white, I'll just take some pure white on my tiny brush and then just fill it all in because I'm seeing a little bit of that blue chalk left over. So I'll just take this brush and just do a little bit of touch up just in case it's the green or the chalk or something showing through. Just to make sure it's nice and pure white. Next up I'm doing the exact same thing but in reverse. This time I have white on my brush. I'm just going to grab a touch of black paint and then I'm going to kind of just blend the two together randomly on my palette to make a gray. And then I'm going to go ahead and just try and brush in a little bit of highlights on here. If I'm finding it's too light, if it's too close to this gray down here because I want it to be darker, I'll just grab a little bit more black and then just try and work that in. Now that I have that gray on there, I'm just going to go ahead and try and blend it in. So I'm just grabbing some pure black by itself, 
And then I'm going to just go right on these edges and just try and make a nice transition between the two. Now the location of the highlights for the black is kind of tough to judge, honestly. Um, I thought about not putting it here because if the light is hitting the Pokeball here, the button will cast a shadow here so you wouldn't get any of the highlights. So I wanted to have some go back this way, have a little bit up here, and then back out to the front. So that's where I decided to put them. So I just have kind of a very dark gray that just slightly lightens it up. It's kind of hard to tell where it is, but it's there at least a little bit. For the red's highlight, I just have some red on my brush, and I'm just going to grab a touch of white paint. So I don't have very much on there at all. Um, there's a lot more red paint than there is white. So opposite of where the shadow is, is where I'm going to start to put this highlight. So I'm just going to bring it kind of back and forth in the same motion I did down here. Maybe adding just a little bit of water onto my brush so it's a bit smoother and easier to blend in. I'm going to go straight to the edge of the Pokeball. And then just maybe add a little bit more water so it blends easier. And then just like I had done that shadow, just pull it back and forth until I kind of have this nice crescent moon highlight. And then if I want, I can wash off my brush of all that light red or pink. Dry off my brush. Grab a little bit of red by itself. And then I can use that to kind of blend in these edges. Now that that highlight's done, it's time to finish up this button. So I've messed it up a little bit by doing the black around it, so I'm just going to grab some more white and just make sure I have this the exact shape I need it to be, which is kind of an ellipse, which is kind of like a circle, but it's all stretched out. Now to finish the button, I've just gotten my brush wet and grabbed a little bit of black paint, and then I'm going to just go ahead and kind of fill in half of this button. And then when my brush kind of gets a bit drier, I'll just fill in the other half. And you can see where I kind of messed up, so I'll just wash off my brush. And then I'll just touch it up with that white paint. If you like the look of this Pokeball, you can leave it and work on the grass, but if you'd like to take it a step further, you can keep going from here. So what I'm going to do is I think we need some sort of ridge to give this a bit more depth. So I'm going to sort of take a little bit of white and just a touch of black on my tiny little paintbrush, and then I'm going to go on my palette and just kind of mix them together to make a light gray. Well, more of a medium gray actually. And then right on this edge of the white, I'm just going to kind of paint basically a stripe between the two. Now I'm not super concerned about some of these bumps I'm getting along the bottom because once I finish up filling this I can just take some pure white paint and touch that up. And then over here on this side the same thing except over here we can see where it starts to go down along this part. And we're just going to make this go until maybe about the very bottom of the circle. And it's just going to get thinner and less visible as we get there. Like that. So now's a good time for me to clean off my brush from this gray and switch back to white and do some cleanup work on just this part. So I've done the white's ridge, now we're going to do the same for the button. This right along this side, we're just going to paint the ridge of this button in. Or I guess the ring around the button. And the same deal goes 
is once we get towards the top, it's going to get thinner and harder to see. It's going to be its thickest right at, I guess, 9 o'clock of that circle. Now that definitely helped push it a step further, but something else we can do is we can push our shadow and our highlight of our Pokeball. So just like before when we were adding this gray, we can go ahead and keep pushing that shadow further and further so it's darker and darker and darker down here. So just like before, I have um, some watered down black on my brush and all I did was get my brush wet, grab some black, and then I just add a touch of white. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put that down here. And I'm not super concerned that it's real black yet, because I'm trying to push it and make it a lot darker. So if I'm finding that a little bit too much, I'll just wipe off my brush so I don't have so much on there. And then I'll just kind of brush this out so it's a bit smoother. Maybe grab a little bit of water, a little bit more wa um, white on my paintbrush. So I can work that in there and smooth it out. And if I need to, I can brush it up into this part. And I can touch up some of that other stuff later if I'm not happy with it. Like how this gray is interacting with the red. I'm not really worried about that because I still have the red. This is plain black. It'll work itself out in the end. I'm just trying to make sure that I get this super, super smooth here. Now that I've gotten that sufficiently dark, I can just grab some pure white with a clean brush and just work on blending these two together. Now before I go ahead and touch up the mess I've made here, I'm going to add some of the shadow in the red here. So I'm going to go ahead and get some red on my brush just a touch of black, maybe a little bit of water so I can get it a bit smoother. Just somewhere in my palette, I'm gonna kind of blur all those together. That's not dark enough, so I need a little bit more black. Now it's too much. A bit more red. That's better. I kind of wanted this more of a maroon color. So I'm just going to kind of do the same sort of motion I was doing on the other half, but just down here, straight to the edge of the Pokeball. I can touch up all of it later, so I'm not super concerned about getting it in the green or on the black. I'm only concerned really about getting it from here down because I like how that looks so far. So that looks pretty good. And I only needed a little bit there, so I'm just gonna wash off my brush. Make sure it's clean of all that dark color. Grab some of that pure magenta. Still got some water on it. Pure magenta. And then just try and blend those two together. So now that that shadow looks good, I can go ahead and work on touching things up. So I'm just going to take a bit of this pure black and start to fill this back in. And then after I finish that, I can go ahead and mix up some of that light gray I had before and paint back in this ridge. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the highlights on the red part. So I just have some red on my brush, grabbed a little bit of white, and I'm just going to push this highlight further. So I'm just painting that light red that got mixed up from my colors on my brush. Um, and I wasn't super concerned about staying in the line down here, but up here, because the grass isn't going to be 
showing as much, I need to be real careful that I stay within these lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and blend this down into the rest of the Pokeball. In order to make the Pokeball look like it's sitting in the grass, I mixed up the three greens again. I have the dark, the medium, and the light using my yellow and blue, just like I had done before. So I'm just going to take this dark green and start to paint some grass lines on top of the Pokeball. And just like before, I want them to be really random. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill some of those in, starting with this dark green until I'm happy with how many there are. And then I'll grab the medium green and then the light green. Just like before, I filled in the dark green, so I'm going to move on to my medium green. And just go ahead and draw a few more detailed grass strokes in. Finished up the medium green, moving on to that light green. One of the other things you have to do is sign your name. So I'm going to be filling my name in with white here in the corner, and then I'll be filling it in green in a little bit. And we're done. We have our Pokeball laying in the grass. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a print or a poster, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. And if you've painted with me today, I'd love to see it. Please send me a picture on Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Intro to Painting, and I'll see you again here on Malmakes.